Good morning, friends. How are you doing today? All good. It is my joy to uh, introduce to you the Reverend Heather Burke. Heather, thank you for being with us today. Happy to be here. It's great. She and I want to spend a little time uh, just uh, having a little conversation together uh, and to give you the opportunity to get to know a little more about her. Many of you took advantage of opportunities we had yesterday uh, and We've had an awful lot of folks between the various committees who have been involved in getting to know you mm -hmm. and uh, bring you to this point. And uh, a little quick word about Heather. Uh, Heather grew up in the next county over from where I ministered in Georgia uh, for nearly 20 years. And uh, she is a graduate of Sanford University and also uh, the McAfee School of Theology, which is Mercer University's Divinity School. Mm -hmm. Uh, you were a student there when I was on the Board of Visitors yes. uh, way back in the day there. So, uh, not way back. You're not old enough to no, be way okay. back. No, okay. Let's uh, only I get be that kind. distinction. So, yeah. yeah. Heather, tell us a little bit about your journey uh, into ministry. Yeah. Well, like many of you, I'm sure, I grew up in the church, and um, I grew up, as you do here, going on Wednesday evenings to church to do missions, activities. My mom ran that, and so I got sneak peeks at the lessons, and I got to look through the, the drawer at home that had all of the fun stuff that she had collected from missionaries that she had met and places that my dad had traveled and all of those international things. And, and so I fell in love with that world. Um, but I grew up in a church where, where women were not in leadership, and so I didn't really see um, a path for a, a woman to work in the church except to do children's ministry or uh, to do missions. And I am an only child, and so I didn't uh, quite grow up around children. That wasn't a comfort zone for me. And so I thought to myself, even as early as second grade, I'm going to go into missions. This is the thing that I'm learning about, that I am loving. I mean, I had an autograph book at home for um, such famous people as uh, Chip and Dale and Cinderella and the missionaries I met. And I wanted to be one of those people. But as I told the search committee, I think really early on, uh, I am an introvert by nature. And I started to realize pretty quickly that the life that I thought a missionary was going to have to live did not match with what I was comfortable with and who I was. And so for the longest time, I thought and I prayed, God, just, just change me, just make me the person that needs to be the person to do the work that I'm supposed to do. And that is a silly prayer, as I'm sure you know. Uh, but it took me a little while to grow into learning that, um, that God makes us all unique and we are that way on purpose, and that the things, the gifts that God puts in each of us are wonderful and good and useful to the kingdom, and we are not required to change to be useful. God is calling us into things that use the gifts that God has given us. And so God eventually uh, worked on me and, and helped me to see that church was, was more my calling, that uh, ministry inside this kind of intentional community was where I was meant to be. Uh, but I, again, didn't have a lot of experience with children even up into college. And so I was saying, Lord, anything in church but not children's ministry. <laughs> Just... It's, That's when God messes with you. Yep. There we are. And I kept getting internships in children's ministry. Um, and that should have been a sign, but it wasn't. And I was working in behind-the-scenes stuff and then finally got an opportunity to go to the beach for the summer. It was children's ministry, and I thought, I can do this for a summer. It'll be near the beach. That'll be fun and doable. And strangely enough, what I loved most was being with the children and not being at the beach. It was the first time I really got to build relationships and be in classrooms with children and go on field trips and be intentional about building those relationships. And I fell in love with it, and I found that it gave me life. And so I, I went back and finished up my last year of seminary and told my friends, I think I'm going to go into children's ministry. And it's fine that they laughed in my face. I don't take it personally. They had just heard me so many times say, oh, no, I can't do that. 
but you know what? God works wonderful things even when we're not expecting it. And um, being with children has been the great joy of what I do. It is the thing that gives me life and keeps me coming back to it. Outstanding. And she has had uh, two fine ministries um, mm-hmm. in, in full-time capacities in South Carolina and in Kentucky. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, tell us a little bit about just what, it, what part of children's ministry and the things that just excite you in seeing children grow to be who God designed them to be. Yeah. I really believe that children have their own faith lives that we are not um, called to give them all of the answers to build something from nothing, but that God has already worked in them uh, an ability to relate to the divine, and and, um, they have wonderful faith in themselves. And I think that comes out most strongly in questions that they ask. So the thing that I love most about children's ministry is having those conversations where big questions come up, whether it's at camp or it's preparing for baptism, uh, or it is just a regular Sunday or Wednesday night, those big, bold questions are wonderful. And you know, I think as we get older, we start to fear the answers to those big questions sometimes because they, they rock our worldview or they're, they grapple with things that we just don't want to have to deal with in our daily life. They're scary, but children just want to know. They have a wonderful curiosity, and so they ask big questions. And I think one of the things that God has gifted me with is the ability to sit in those questions um, and, and to hold that tension a little bit. So um, I, I just love, yeah, exploring the, the deep questions of why would God and what would God and would God do this, and that is so fun to me. I love it. I love that you use the word grapple. It's one mm-hmm. of my favorite words that nobody <laughs> uses much because I think that's a, lot, a big part of our faith. It is. Well, tell us about, uh, a little bit about what intrigues you uh, about Murfreesboro mm-hmm. and the ministry here uh, yeah. to, to say, you know, I think God may be leading me there. What, yeah. what all jumps out at you about yeah. us? Well, I told a few of you who were on Zoom with us yesterday that um, sometimes in my position, if you are going to meet with a search committee, um, they come to you as a potential candidate, and they, they say, we have this list of things that we need this person to do, and we have this vision, and we're going to go, and this is what you're going to do. And it's very prescribed, and it's very stressful. Um, and that is not what your search committee has done. They have come and said, this is, uh, this is what we value, and these are the things that we are looking for in a, a, a candidate and a minister for our children, and this is who our church is. And we would like to go on a journey. We would like to go on a journey with this candidate and see where God is leading us. We just want to love on children and build them up and build this program. And I loved that. I loved that there was a sense of coming together and figuring out what is in front of us together and praying through that together. I really felt like it was an invitation to go on a journey with you and to see what God is doing in this place. You get an idea of uh, what we as the search committee uh, and then later as staff and other folks have been involved, began to see God at work and mm-hmm. seeing his timing uh, through all of this. Mm-hmm. And uh, we are very grateful for that. Yes. Uh, I think many of you know that we, it was a nationwide search. We went as far north as Virginia, uh, far south as Florida, and far west as Texas, and lots of places in between. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, very thrilled to, uh, to have this conversation. And to have this um, opportunity this morning to, mm-hmm. to do that. So I will leave you with one little fun question. She is a, uh, a devotee, officiato of teas. Yes. Okay. So what kind of tea did you have for breakfast this morning before church? Well, I had my travel tea, which is different than my regular tea. Okay. Okay. So you don't like have a preaching tea like you just like a, a, no, a, a, you do beforehand? It's usually a very British style of builder's tea that's a very strong, dark tea. Like the, the kind of coffee that you make and your, your spoon would stand up in it, it's that level. Okay. But I didn't travel with that because that requires milk and sugar. And okay. so I couldn't, yes. Yeah. So this was a travel tea, actually, that was a gift from the search committee. It was in the basket, yeah. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you yes. enjoyed that. And uh, she'll be bringing uh, our sermon this morning. Uh, and then after that, we'll have the opportunity. Don't, don't run for the doors, folks, okay? <laughs> Hang tight, because we'll have the opportunity to, uh, to go into a brief business uh, meeting and to uh, entertain a motion from our search committee and act on that together. So, 
Uh, let me have a word of prayer together uh, with, with all of us, uh, blessing and asking God's leadership in, in these things as he continues. Father, how we thank you for this day and the blessings you bring us. We thank you for Heather, her life and ministry. And uh, Lord, how we pray that you, uh, as you have to this point, will continue to lead us and guide us and direct us uh, as, we did, as we search to be the church you would have us to be in every arena, uh, especially that of our, our preschoolers, our children, our young families. And we are grateful for uh, her openness and willingness to consider uh, uh, this being her place of ministry and uh, in this season of life. And for that, we give you thanks. And God, be with us through the rest of this service. Open our minds and hearts to your leading. Uh, let us feel your closeness. Again, your guidance and direction in all that we are and all that we do. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you.